It's like to be on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic at a public hospital in New York City. Dr. Ricky Lane, she's an emergency room doctor at the Elmhurst Hospital in Queens. She says, quote, Our hospital has never, ever, ever seen anything like this. She's worked there for more than 20 years. Elmhurst, a public hospital, has 545 beds. They are overflowed. She said the emergency department has been overwhelmed for about three weeks now. And the hospital is in desperate need of help. It's the epicenter, the fastest growing place in the nation right now. More than 21,000 known cases, 281 deaths as of this moment. They've spent weeks now expanding the areas within the facility and even going outside of the facility to house the coronavirus patients. But the ever-rising rush has been inconceivable. Inconceivable. She said, whatever space we create, it's immediately filled and overfilled. That's only going to spread to the next epicenter and the next epicenter. It could be coming your way. Are you, are you practicing social distancing? Are you? Are you really? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. It was brought to my attention yesterday that there were about 3,000 young men and women on missions outside of the country who were having a hell of a time getting back home. So many worried parents. A mother reached out to me yesterday about it. She didn't want to come on air. She didn't want to be identified. Then I just happened to come across a Facebook post from an old schoolmate from Kemmer, Wyoming. I reached out to her, and she agreed to come on. It's the Keeping It Real podcast, and there is nothing more real than having a child out of the country during this time. I can't even imagine. We're going to talk with somebody now who does. He's currently on a mission in Peru. Her name is Celeste Anderson, former classmate of mine from Kemmer, er, 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 Wyoming. And only people from Kimmer will get that, or people from Wyoming, right? Hi, Celeste. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, I know this is a hard time for you. Um, it is. Can you tell us the very latest of, of what the church is trying to do to get these missionaries? I understand that there's just no way that they can bring them back to the United States right now. The church is, right now, We're still. I think they're still relying on the embassy, the State Department, to work with the Peruvian government. So they're letting that happen. So my son is still in quarantine and cannot move for at least a week, I think. But I think that if things don't move forward faster, then the church will step in. Have you been able to be in contact with him? Yes, I have, actually. I just spoke with him this morning. And he just barely got paperwork from the embassy to assign him a name and put him on a flight list, like a manifest. Okay. But what I understand from the State Department, there's no flights coming in right now. Actually, I think three just left today with 300 people. Oh, good. We finally good. got some going Oh, today. very good. This morning, I, I believe I even sent you the article I had read last night. That this is, I mean, we're looking at, you're talking about almost 3,000 missionaries stuck right now trying to get home and can't. Yes. How is he holding up? Actually, he is doing really well because he is, he's not in the epicenter, which is Lima. He's about, I want to say, 12 hours away in the jungle. I don't even know what the word is, but they it's very primitive. So he doesn't really know what's going on, and I am trying to keep it that way just so he doesn't have anxiety over the whole thing while he's in quarantine. It's funny you bring up anxiety. You just happen to be a mental health counselor down there in just outside of Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I am. Let me ask you this. What kind of effect does a pandemic have on people's mindsets? I mean, not being able to go to work and do their daily routines. What can we expect in the coming days? There is going to be huge amounts of, we already have a mental health crisis going on, with, uh, especially with anxiety and depression. 
And I suspect, and well, I, and I'm already seeing it with clients, that that is going way up. Now they're worried about their job, job security. They're worried about what if things run out of the stores? What if trucks can't get food to them? What if the stimulus package doesn't come through? How do they feed their families? So basically worrying about what they can't control. Um, yes. And yeah, I, I got to tell you, I had anxiety yesterday. Didn't know why. But I haven't left the house. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that would do good. Yeah. And leaving the house gave me more anxiety because I saw people in parking lots at things like Home Depot and Walmart and stuff going, oh, no, why? Now, also, what are some of the signs that people can look for if, say, somebody is, you know, hey, you're just not acting right. Um, you seem a little off. You know, you're together with your spouse now more than ever. <laughs> and a lot of people aren't used to that. And uh, some communication barriers breaking down. What what are some signs that people can look for to kind of open the lines of communication? You know, it's really funny. It, it goes two ways. I think I think people who have stable marriages, it's been a really good time for them to connect and reconnect because there's nothing else for them to do. However, you know, there are those people who are in abusive relationship and. Their reprieve is when their spouse or their partner leaves. Now they're stuck in the same home with them. And maybe some of them are planning to leave or seek shelter or get help and they cannot go. So I I see it going two ways. You know, either you become closer together as you're working towards a common goal or, you know, in abusive relationships, I see it getting worse as we continue on. Do you think we can expect a spike in domestic violence? I do. Um, I was reading an article the other day in China, now that it's kind of the bell curve is kind of flattened. They have um, a surge in domestic violence reports. Is there a, a website or I saw today that somebody started a podcast on domestic issues because people were actually getting together and uh, you're seeing spikes in certain areas of the country where the police are being called for a lot of domestic disputes. And is there any resources that you're aware of or are there any tips that you can give people to say, hey, this is when I need to step away. This is when I need to call somebody. It really comes down to hopefully they have some support in place already and that their friends may understand when they're, they're not in a safe place that they can call for them. There are hotline numbers available in most cities, local cities. I don't know how that they'll respond to that right now because they may be responding to other emergencies. So that is a concern. But right now it is, it's kind of touch and go with that. What about AA members and NA members? What do they do? And that's another great question because a lot of people rely on that to keep them in maintenance and sobriety and um, healthy living, and they don't have access to that. I'm hoping that they're using their sponsors and using FaceTime to connect with each other and, and support each other through this. I advocate for that, that they continue to do, you know, touch base in some method just to keep in touch. There's so many questions and so many things going on. And, you know, to add on top of it, your son being out of the country. Just want to let you know that we're praying for you here and uh, thinking about you. I want to thank you so much and uh, keep us up to date. And we will follow up with you on on what's going on with your son. The very best. And uh, anything we can do, please let us know. Thank you so much. Celeste Anderson. Mesquite, Nevada. And because we do this show in real time, you might hear my mood change just now. This just came across my screen from NBC News. And I I look at it, and I really can't believe it. I really can't. It says Democratic and Republican leaders are scrambling members of Congress back to Washington tonight. Our time now is just before 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And why are they heading back to Washington? Why are they scrambling? You're ready? Because they suddenly believe the $2 trillion economic relief package might not pass. Might not pass by the voice vote that they planned for tomorrow. And it could be delayed. 
if at least 216 members don't show up to vote on the floor. So members are now racing to get back to D.C. by Friday morning in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic because leaders fear at least one member, and they say it's likely Representative Thomas Massey out of Kentucky, will demand a recorded vote. Representative Fred Upton from Michigan wrote on Twitter just now, the CARES Act is historic legislation, which is why I'm driving back to D.C. to help get this thing over the finish line. The drive from Kalamazoo is nearly 10 hours back to Washington. Other Democratic members were pointing a finger at Massey on Twitter as they hustled back to Washington. Quote, If you intend to delay passage of the coronavirus relief bill tomorrow morning, please advise your 428 colleagues right now so we can book flights and expend $200,000 in taxpayer money to counter your principled but terribly misguided stunt. Hashtag thank you. That from Minnesota Representative Dean Phillips. Wow. You know, sometimes the news just kicks you right in the gut. Didn't I say I was feeling optimistic earlier? Not so much now. You can reach us on Facebook, which has a link to our website. The show is called Chat on Demand, the Keeping It Real podcast. Like our page now, bookmark the website. All the podcasts will be uploaded there. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Spotify, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, and more coming soon. I don't even know what to say. Maybe I shouldn't do the show in real time. It really took the wind out of me right there. At this time, best I can say is, love your neighbor, love your family, take care of one another. We are all in this together. We'll be back with another episode this weekend. I'll leave you with a quote from Scotch Spana. She's the author, researcher, and expert of the 1918 pandemic. And I quoted her on Thursday's show. She says, pandemics aren't just physical. They bring with them an almost shadow pandemic of psychological and societal injuries as well. This is Chat on Demand. Keeping it real. Thanks for listening.